When it comes to big budget films, you don't get much bigger than director J.J. Abrams. And you don't get much bigger than Star Trek. We're here at Sydney's iconic opera house for the world premiere. Were you a Trekkie before this film came along? You know what? Long term, I have to admit it. Uh, I, I watched. I was watching Star Trek when I was a boy, so for me, it's re really surreal to uh, to be a part of this reboot. So, was there a particular character that you secretly wanted to play, or you're happy with what you got? No, I, I couldn't be more happy with what I got. You're kidding. Uh, to me, Star Trek was always a, more of a cult of personality than a, than a science fiction show, and that's the wonderful thing about this movie. I think that what JJ and this extraordinary cast has managed to do is uh, capture the very essence of what uh, Roddenberry created back in the late 60s. Whose side are you on in the film? Uh, Eric Banner. I mean, he's one of ours. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Well, I mean, never cross a man with a tattooed face. That's my motto. At least Obviously not good enough an answer. Yeah. Okay, um, <laughs> the baddies. How's that? I'll try not to be amusing. Is he a baddie in it, is he? Yeah, he is. Oh, really? I think it's fantastic. I mean, it was uh, from the, the very early days of William Shatner. It was just a fabulous franchise then. It's continued. It's not one of those things that really got too daggy. It really yeah. didn't get daggy. Maybe a little. Certainly an enthusiastic fan group to be uh, putting it out there too. Have you felt sort of additional pressure because of the Trekkies out there? Well, you always feel that kind of pressure just getting into someone else, and there's so many people who were involved with this project. I mean, the franchise of Star Trek for 40 plus years, so there's a lot of responsibility. But um, we just figured, well, it just makes us work a little harder. But someone pointed out to me today, which I'd actually forgotten, that I did, I was involved in a Star Trek spoof on Full Frontal and I had a plastic crab glued to the front of my forehead. <laughs> and knowing our budget at the time, it probably actually was a plastic crab that was glued to my forehead. So I'm glad they were, I think I was playing a Klingon or something. Um, so that's actually how I was cast. I sent that reel to JJ and uh, asked him to pass comment and he just cast me in the film. Eric, we've seen you say, uh, play some pretty ugly dudes through history. You've been Hulk, you've been Chopper. Now you're a villain with a tattoo in his face. Are you starting to get tight cast in these well, roles? You might be surprised, but the women tend to like that sort of look. You know, I think, I think they like that sort of batty, you know, slightly disfigured, tattooed look, I, I find, anyway. What's it like playing an ad adolescent uh, Vulcan, is it? Adolescence? Well, you're Chelsea. Young spot. Yeah, but not adolescence. Oh, not adolescent. All right, yes, young. Dashing. Dashing, okay, what was it like? <laughs> well, Chelsea, How old is playing, it? A, playing a dashing Spark was really, no. Uh, it was incredible, uh, you know, it, it gave me an opportunity to explore this character from a completely different angle, um, and I feel like uh, I feel a lot of gratitude. Big budget film, bold move taking on Star Trek, but um, is it a good fit for you because you, you're known for your big budget and uh, big stuff? Uh, well, you know, I, because I wasn't a Trek fan to begin with, at first it felt like a very strange fit, but working on it and getting to appreciate the characters and the dynamic between them and this is an origin story so you never have to have seen Star Trek before to see this film. I found my way in. I hope you know other people do too.